Before we begin, I wanted to make sure to say that there was a mistake in the last video I put up. I'm not gonna say what it was because I wanna see if you could catch it. It's in the beginning part during the instructions um, and it has to do with a geometric shape. So if you catch what the mistake was, email one of us and let us know and I will um, try to give a shout out to you in the next video that I make. Today we're moving along in our art history timeline and we will be exploring ancient Roman art and architecture. In terms of sculpture, remember Greeks had a more idealistic uh, representation of people. So they would, even if a person was average or not very attractive, short, fat, had um, pock marks on their face, they would still look uh, in an ideal form. Um, physically fit, tall, chiseled jaw, that sort of thing. Whereas in Rome, they started to actually represent the individual in a way that was more realistic. And um, they would include all of the things that we might have otherwise seen as discrepancies. So it was much easier to know who that individual was who was being represented. In architecture, of course, they used columns in ancient Rome. A lot of the buildings look very similar to the Greek structures, um, but the Romans are known for the arch. The Romans believed that most of their surroundings should be very decorative and beautiful. Um, the homes you could see used a lot of fresco paintings and also mosaics. Mosaics were the tiled pieces and uh, frescoes were usually a mixture of plaster and pigment. So they would mix the paint in with the plaster to make it stay and last longer. In 1594, the city of Pompeii was discovered um, centuries later. So <clears throat> what we learned from that was how the Romans lived because um, there was, if you know the story, a large volcanic eruption from Mount Vesuvius that completely destroyed the city within a matter of hours, um, a little over a day, I believe. And what it did was it actually the coverage from that allowed um, for almost preservation of this city that was thriving at one time.
So drawing from these examples that were mainly found in the city of Pompeii, I'd like for you to create your own room in the style of an ancient Roman building. It can be uh, probably a bedroom or a um, living room space would be best. For supplies today, you're going to need a magazine of some sort. Home and gardens or something home related would be the best. Um, a pad of paper, this is watercolor paper because we're going to be painting with watercolor. So you'll need your watercolor paints and a container of water as well as some paint brushes, pencil, Sharpie or black ink marker, pair of scissors, and a ruler or something with a straight edge that you can use like a ruler. So the first thing I did was to draw a square near the center of my page and I used about three inches per side. Um, but if you want to freehand your square, you can do that as well. So the next thing I did here, I know it looks a little bit strange, is I drew a line from the corner of my page to the corner of that square on each side, like that. And this is going to be your back wall in your room. So just think about that when you are making your square. Do I want it small? Do I want it larger? Do I want it the wall more towards the bottom of the page? Do I want like a long hallway? For the next step, I cut out some magazine clippings just to see what sort of style I wanted and how it was going to work in the space. Um, and then I'll definitely paint the walls and do my like fresco kind of design, but I might um, include furniture or, you know, modern stuff within this classic Roman style and kind of play with how the clippings will work in the space or if they will work in the space. Okay, so next I went back and I outlined my pencil with Sharpie and I did some fun sort of details around here, around the archway and the, the molding here on the ceiling. It's got a bit of a cartoon quality to it, which I'm fine with because we're not going for a super realistic um, representation here. It's more about um, learning about design and history in the process. All right, so here is my painted room using watercolor. And I chose to make the center a little bit lighter just because I want my eye to be drawn right to that back wall. And with the fresco on the ceiling, I used all of the colors in the room and incorporated them on that um, painting on the ceiling. All right, well, here is my finished dining room that I created. A lot of lounging happening and I have like a fake window here looking out to maybe the hillside or Mount Vesuvius, hopefully not. 